What seemed to be a jolly time on a football field turned into a horrible accident that changed the trajectory of his life. Today, Paul Itota will be sharing his story of how he found hope to walk again. How are you doing, Paul? I'm fine. How's it going? Going on well. Nice having me in this same place. Of course, it's a pleasure to have you on the yeah, show. So sure. your story is intriguing. Yes. And just before we get to um, the crooks of this matter, mm -hmm. I'd like to know what picked your interest as a child? What recreational activities were you involved in as a child? Okay, um, obviously, um, football. Um, football, cycling was um, definitely um, what picked my interest. And I was so focused in it and engrossed in it um, mm. to the point that I went into school having the mind of becoming a presenter, a sport presenter, you know. Wow. Um, yeah, um, I loved football. Sports. Yeah, sports, cycling. Could move from one place to another street, two street ahead to go mm. play football competitions, winning with the, also so all of the praise, chants and all of that. Yeah, d d definitely. Um, football was my life at that time. Mm. Yeah, sure. So were you the type who went against his parents? To you know, definitely. get on that field. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely get instructions as as a child. Just go anywhere, yeah. stay put here, and you know, trust tr trust us. Hmm. Um, when you see your mom leaving, you're also taking your leave and doing that which you know how to do best. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. So, were, were you adventurous and inquisitive as a child? Not really, not necessarily. Um, yeah, um, inquisitive but ventures, yeah. Mm. I love moving from one place to another. I want to do venture into things, want to get mm. new stuff to be done. Mm. Yeah, at the time I was growing, I could um, dance, I could decorate, I could um, cook. Mm. I could, yeah, so I, I wanted to do a whole lot, um, venture into a whole lot of things, get yeah. new stuff. At the time in my life, I, I left football into um, creative arts, into directing movies nice. uh, when I got into school. I worked in the studio, you know, so basically I had a lot to, to do when I was growing up, so it really was fun for me. But football seems to be the number one thing that tops yeah, the list. Yeah. Why football? What is it about football that pulls you in? Okay, one thing about football was that firstly, um, I, I run. I was a very fast runner. You must be very athletic. Yeah, I was. I was. I was. Um, while I was growing up, we had um, these entire sports. Uh, we would run, do competition, inter-school competitions and everything. So I was one of the persons who were representing my team, uh, mm. my school, I mean to say. Yeah. So basically, um, with that in mind, I love football also. And I also love David Beckham. David Beckham used to play seven at that time. And seven was um, more of like you run with the ball, mm. the mm -hmm. pass the ball to the striker. So that piqued my interest. So if I could run and add football to it, it would give me a better edge over others. So mm. that was basically what I had in mind while growing up. So I was very good at it, actually. So yeah. that's, again, a lot of persons love to me, seeing me in the field. Oh, Paul, want to play, want to join you up. Oh, so if I come like this, if you if you selected the team and you're seeing me from afar, you're going to pause so just like the presidential mm. election campaign and all of that. You're like, oh, wait, hold on, don't worry. You're no longer the aspirant anymore. Someone else is coming. He's the chosen yeah, one. He's the chosen one. So <laughs> basically, that, that was that was how um, things were, were for me, you know, oh. until until what day. happened. I, we'll, we'll get you'll there. Get, we'll, we'll get, get there. there. You yeah. know, you mentioned a lot of things. You went into <laughs> creative arts, directing, yeah. football, yeah. and um, you were really active from your yeah. description. Sure. And yeah. it begs the question: What is the most dangerous thing you've ever done as a child to have fun? Okay, the most dangerous thing I could remember, uh, there was a time, okay, where I grew from was a very dangerous um, area. I grew from Upper Sopomba. Wow. Um, St. Savior, uh, there about Pomomo <laughs> area and all of that. And my mom had the mentality that if, if, he, if she leaves us, we become like the way what children we normally see around. So whenever she goes out, she locks us inside. Mm. Yeah, and, and, tell, and gives us an assignment to do. So we had a spare key. Growing up. Interesting. Yeah, we had this pet key. So when she leaves, we open the door, go out, play football, do something, mm. just come in again and just, we know the time she normally comes in. So we come in, lock the door again, assume that nothing happened. Mm. There was one fateful day. We opened the door, she forgot something in the house. When she came, she saw the children she locked inside, yeah, outside. Okay. <laughs> it was terrible. It was terrible. Wow. 12 o'clock in the night was it was the judgment day you know 
So you definitely understand what I'm saying. So yeah, it was very the sound of cane on your back. Yeah. Don't not necessarily even the cane, the pepper, the flogging and the counseling. That comes after the, yeah, the punishment. Sure. <laughs> sure. So it was so tragic. Yeah, now I, I know I know a bit about football yeah. and I know that um the sometimes there are casualties. Uh, maybe yeah. it's a broken <laughs> leg, dislocated um f um tibula or you know, just an an injury yeah. on the football field. So yeah. I'm sure you must have encountered that because of course the terrain wasn't as smooth as a a football pitch. Yeah. A standard football pitch. Mm. So would you tell me your experience of all of that? Okay, is it the the breaking of the leg? Yeah, from how your experience was <laughs> with bowling in the neighborhood okay. and how yeah. it led Definitely, to that experience. Definitely, um, um, when you're involved in sporting, sporting activities, whichever, you definitely will encounter injuries. Mm. Um, one, one or two fractures, um, yeah. armstrings, um, joint dislocation and all of that. So basically it was there. There was a time I had to put my finger um, we were playing one um, played football close to six hours as we were playing it started raining so I, I, I played the ground and my finger pulled so wow. my mind was like I was not going to play football anymore with the pain and everything so I think I spent close to three months without playing football so the finger has to grow back, grow back. And, and all of that so yeah we, we really encountered a whole lot of injuries but the one that changed the trajectory of your life. Yeah. How did it happen? Okay, I'll start quickly start off from um, while we were in um, NCC, um, NYC camp. Okay. I was privileged to be the coach of my um, plateau, plateau nine. Mm. And um, we won the tournaments, and okay. that gave me an edge to serve in the capital city of Adwe Kitty. I mm. served in the Kitty State. And um, that also gave me a leverage to also get accommodation NCCF, Nigerian Corpus Christian Fellowship. And um, yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a son of God. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I heard God clearly, stay here, you're going nowhere. But I already had my own mind set up because again, the way I grew up because of my parents, mm. you have to go this way or no other. So I, I'm a church boy, you know. So Spirit of God told me, stay in NCCF, I told myself I was going to rent an apartment. The commandments were just too much in this mm. NCCF secretariat. So the day I was leaving, I was to leave. We had a football competition to play and to send off the president of the JCCF. So okay. NCCF and the um, SecGen. My mind was like, let me just play. When I'm done, I'll pack my stuff and go down to my place I rented. Uh, as we started off with the football, it was just the first minutes of the game um, a guy from the way it wasn't so it wasn't supposed to be serious it hits my leg and i saw my leg flap, being fl it was just flapping so it's just like the uh, the joints pulled out yeah and so my tibia and fibula fibula, fibula bone got yeah. broken and um <coughs> it was as if they packaged my leg as a um, package of sardine wow. down to the hospital and it was terrible um they casted the leg at first did a whole lot of scan and the doctor found out that I have to do a major operation on the leg. Mm. And um, it, was a, it was very terrible. It was terrible. What was going through your mind at this point? What was going through my mind was that, will I ever come out of this? And that was the truth. I, I'm sorry, but just a little humor here. Were you thinking, I'm never going to play football again? Yeah, I'm not playing football anymore. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah, that really hits me hard. Wow. Yeah, because again, I had a mind of going into football full time. Mm, like was, professionally. Yeah, professional, and that was my mind because I was very good at it, you know. That was my mind because, again, if I could coach a plateau, NYC, um, plateau, and we won, meaning you had a, you had had a chance, you had a chance of there. doing something great. Yeah. But again, God had the best plan for me. And Bible talked about all things work together for good. You yeah, know? yeah. So basically, um, when my fibula got broken and the doctor saw that it was broken and they told me that I was going to go for a major operation, mm. my Z eye, the state coordinator, every person we are aware about, my name was so there. Who is this person? We need to see this person and all of that. So we ventured into the operation. My leg, they screwed my leg. What do you mean screw? Yeah, with an implant. Well. Yeah, because I was hearing screwing my bones to with an implant to my leg and all of that. You know, yeah, I was awake. Why? I was while just about to this, ask. Yeah, I was awake while all of this was going on. I know they gave me an attestia and all of that yeah. to to cushion the pain the and pain. everything. Yeah. But again, 
it wasn't so it wasn't so epic. Yeah. yeah, I was hearing the screws and everything. It was terrible. So um after the operation, every night I always will hear <coughs> um feel the pain mm. and um I choose to I told myself I choose to cry at night. Mm. I choose to cry at night and be happy in the morning where mm. everybody sees me. So that was my joy, that was my hope. Uh, so my crying during the night was personal for me mm. because again I choose to feel all of that pain at that time. Mm. Mm. But again, even when I'm feeling the pain during the day, I just absorb it and give myself courage. Again, I never liked all of that pity party yeah. games yeah. and all of that. You know. What so year did, did this happen? 2015-16, yeah. That's about, um, if we're looking at 216, that's about six, six years, years ago. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, apart from football, your passion for football, did that um, accident impact any other area of your life? Yes, it did. Um, I'll say that it gave me a direction and a, a mm. repositioning mm. of the call upon my life. Again, I had a plan for myself. I had a plan, a big plan for myself. But again, um, God used that experience to, mm. to teach me and to reposition me to his call for my life. That was, was a point of a counter for me personally. Mm. Yeah, because the doctors told me I was going to work in a year and six months time. I told myself I was going to work in six months time. So at that time, you weren't able to walk? No. Was it your left leg or your right leg? My right leg. My right wow. leg, yeah. So um, they told me I was going to work in a year and six months time. I told myself I was going to work in six months time. I'm 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 curious. Were you incapacitated at any point in this time? Did you need help? Yeah, um, I was. <laughs> maybe taking a shower. Did yeah. you need help getting something from the floor, yeah. from the table? Yeah. So that was where NCCF came into play. Um, mm. I was taking back to NCCF where I was running from, just like the story of Jonah. Hmm. So I sold off my apartment, sold off my stuff. Mm. So I went back to NCCF. So I had a whole lot of brothers, let me take it like that. Hmm. So they would take me out to the bathroom, beat me, wow. so, and all of that. So I got tired at the time. I told myself, I won't be able to do this anymore. Were you on a wheelchair or no, using crutches? No, I was on crutches. I was on crutches. How? I told myself I was not going to do this anymore. How were you able to move? You know, go from here to there, from... Yeah. So I had to learn how to make use of the crutches. And that's why I told you I was going to work in six months' time. Yeah. So I got tired at the time. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Wow. Before now, I used to stay. We, I was staying in the sec, um, 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 second floor of the house. House. So, but I was moved down to an apartment so, down floor. Hmm. But I told myself I was going to go up. Mm. So the time came, I took my bag, I took my crutches, and I went up. Yeah, this is you rising from the ashes yeah, now. Yeah. So I went up, and I told myself, I told everyone within um, around me, I'm like, in six months time, I'm, I'm going to walk. Hmm. A whole lot of persons started laughing. Even the doctors like, it's not possible. It has never happened before. And all of them like. But I like it or not, I'm going to work in six months' time. So there was a time I dropped my crushes. I limped hmm. with one of this leg. Your left leg. In my left leg. It was very strong. I limped. I took a bike. I didn't follow the um, um, NCCA bus. Hmm. I entered the bike, went to the hospital myself, and the doctor saw me, and they were all shouting, man, this guy has gone mad. Wow. If this implant failed, you're going to go for another surgery and all of that. Yeah, a little fear came in, and they pleaded with me, okay buy a walking stick it was still very fresh at that time and wow. i told them i'm not going to make use of crutches anymore and they told me okay just buy a walking stick i didn't buy but they gave an order to the president then in nccf mm. so they bought before i came to the house so when they gave me the crush and the walking, walking stick, stick the walking stick got broken that same day and i told myself okay what's the what's the what's the use i trade mm. off so what i now did was to make use of one of the crushes Mm. Yeah, there was okay. one particular day we were just um, worshipping God, praying in NCCF. I was dancing, dancing. I told myself, I need to dance. I need to use this leg to dance. No matter whatever will happen, should happen. Mm. I threw off the crutches. I started dancing. I was just there, dancing wow. and leaping and all of that. So basically, that was where, where the healing started from. Incredible. Yeah, it started from there. Then also, um, I started listening to, that was also when I got in co um, contact with um, Laura Diego's songs. Oh, yeah, mm. um, basically, um, trust in you was um, a major, mm, mm. major uh, turn out run for me. I was so engrossed with the song. Morning, evening, nights, I, I played the song from night to whenever. Mm. Each song, again, was also there. So I was just more of playing, watching music, just in there, mm. shouting, singing aloud and everything. So the healing started from there. And amazingly, in six months time, 
I started working. It's, it's, it's incredible, really, if you ask me, but you've only talked about how you were able to stay persistent and stay optimistic. Yeah. Were there times where you were so down, mm -hmm. depressed maybe, mm -hmm. and never thought that this could get better? Yeah, I think I also, I, I, I said a little bit about that. Um, I, I took a decision myself because mm. it matter, it's a matter of choice. Mm. I choose to focus on what I'm, I'm faced with mm. and I choose to look ahead of where I'm going to. Amazing. Uh, yeah, so um, I took a decision that regardless, mm. um, yes, I, 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 I prefer crying at night, doing all of the than casting at night, mm. then doing all of the uplifting in the morning, in the morning. and rejoicing in the morning. So awesome. 12 o'clock in the night, it's also, I'm used to it now. Every, every now and then, 12, I'm, I'm up. Mm. Yeah, just again doing one or two things, but then it used to be the pain mm. my because my bone was not compatible with the with implants. The implant. so, so how long did it take to heal? It took a year and six months. To heal? Yeah, to heal. Incredible. What, what? Th that I can't explain. I don't know how. It's, it's, it's beyond yeah. human comprehension. Yeah, sure. So what do you have to say to somebody who's um, <laughs> going through a similar experience or something else? Yeah, um, I would say trust, faith in God. Um, yeah, doctors are good, and med medicine is good, perfect. But um, we have the Almighty mm. that knows beyond the doctors. Like I said, the doctors gave me their own knowledge of a year and six months' time. But knowing only to the fact that God made me, He knows how to make the bone better. I told myself six months' time, that's faith mm. at work. So ways of affirmation is also key. What, what do you hear? What are the things you say to yourself? So regardless of what you're faced with, also know that you, the amount you're using saying wrong things about yourself, you can also use say positive things about yourself. So it's just the same thing, just a flip over. Mm. So basically trust, faith, believe in that, what you believe in. For example, if I'm down, I have a broken leg, I believe that I'm healed, I will be healed. Mm. So just, that's just it, in collaboration with the doctors, please. I also would definitely hit on that. The doctor's prescription is key. That's where God will start healing you from. Mm. And that's the truth. So if you, are, if you have a broken leg, go to the hospital as you also pray. Yeah, if you're sick, visit the hospital as you pray. Get the drugs. Pray and God will heal you from that point in time. Yeah. Wonderful, basically. wonderful. Thank you yeah. so much, Paul, for joining me on yeah. the show. There Thank you, you have much. it. Paul's story of how he found hope to walk again. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Healthy You, brought to you by Food Farm and Consults. My name is Fierce Sharon. Be the light and spread love.